Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be going over conditional rendering in React and we're going to make a project that pretty much depends on conditional rendering. Now, if you're not sure what conditional rendering is, it's pretty much the concept of showing something based on an external component. So for example, do I want to show that the user is logged in? Do I want to show like a hello Anthony on the top right? Well, I would only want to render that if the user is logged in and that is known as conditional rendering. And as you can see here, I'm on the React docs. I hope I'm zoomed zoomed in enough for you guys to read it properly, but we're going to go over some of the examples that the documentation show, and then we're going to go over our own example and make our own application with this. As a reminder, if you find value in this video, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment. I can't tell you how much it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I love interacting with you guys, and I still read every single comment, even though it's hard to reply to all of them. So thank you so much for all the feedback, all the support, and I love <laughs> making videos for you guys. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at some really, really simple uh, examples over here. The first one we have is essentially um, just React's documentation's way of having a very simple, um, easy to understand example of how conditional rendering works. So you won't see it ever like this in a real application. This is more just like pseudocode to show you uh, what conditional rendering is. And essentially, they are displaying a greeting. And the greeting is dependent on whether or not the user User is logged in. If the user is logged in, then we're going to display a user greeting, and if not, we are going to display a guest greeting. Now, this whole way that they did it, where you know you're conditionally rendering things based off an if statement, you won't see that around too much, as it's not exactly best practice. To get to what we actually want to look at, let's scroll down a bit. You can see these examples, they have a lot of examples with like class-based components and stuff like that, so I wouldn't worry too much about all of this. It's very outdated. But if you scroll down a bit, you'll get to one example called inline if with logical and and operator. And this is the first thing we want to look at. So you can see here that they have a variable called unread messages, which is coming from props. You can assume that this unread messages uh, um, variable is essentially just an array uh, because they are essentially checking the length here. Now the way an and and operator will work is when you have an and and operator there are two parts to it. The thing on the left of the and and operator and the thing on the right of the and and operator. Everything on the left of the last and and operator in a statement is pretty much just going to be there as a check. So for example in this case on the left of the end and operator, we are checking whether or not unread messages dot length is greater than zero. Now everything on the right of the end and operator is essentially what we will actually return if everything on the left was proven to be true. So if unread messages dot length is greater than zero and that statement is true, then we are going to return whatever is on the right of it, which happens to be some JSX. And it's a very clever way to do nice little error trapping and error checks throughout your code, especially when it comes to dealing with stuff that will come from the back end that you aren't sure whether or not it will be there or not. So let's make our own application and have our own example. As you can see here, I'm on codesandbox.io because it's a lot easier to make very basic, um, you know, test components and share them with you guys. And we, I don't have to worry about, you know, the text size too much. And I will have the link to this code sandbox in the comments below. But essentially, I have something very basic. Number one, I have a variable called employees that is an array of employee names. The second thing I have is essentially just a div, and within that div, I have one h2 header saying employee list, and then I just map through all the employees and just display the employee's name in h1. And in fact, let's just quickly make the employee list in h1 and the employee in h2, so it looks a bit, or let's even make this like an h4 or something, so it makes it look a bit more uh, natural. Okay, that doesn't look natural at all, but <laughs> let's just leave it there. Um, <clears throat> so essentially, what if, for example, let's assume that right now it's pretty obvious what is going to be inside employees because I'm declaring it. But in a real world application, you're probably going to be getting this from the back end or something else. So what happens if, for example, the back end returns an empty array? Or what happens if the back end just straight up doesn't return an employee's object at all and it's undefined? Well, let's test and see what happens. First, let's set employees to undefined. If we were to save it, you'll see here that we can't read property map of undefined 
undefined. So employees dot map when you try to run the dot map function on employees because employees is undefined it doesn't have <clears throat> a function attached to it called dot map and you will get a type error now if it's just an empty array however dot map will still work on an empty array but now we are displaying you know the title employee list but we have no employees so it might make sense not to you know um display the employee list at all. So let's talk about how we can do some conditional rendering. So first, let's make it very simple. We only want to display the employee list and you know this title saying employee list if we have one or more employees in our object. So let's identify the piece of code that we want to wrap around in our conditional. In our case, we can either do this entire div or just starting over here. Let's do this entire div because this div is sort of made for this entire um, employee list anyways. So we can go ahead, create our squiggly braces. And then in our squiggly braces, we can say employees dot length is greater than one and 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 then to denote that we want to return JSX, um, if this is true, we can put two circle braces and then copy and paste all our code into that circle brace and pop that in right there. Now, if we save it, you'll see that it will format nicely. <clears throat> and we will have, if the employee's le uh, array length is greater than one, and, and we will return all of this stuff here. Now, what happens, so this works for this case where our employees.length is less than um, one. Now, I want you to think about it, or, and sorry, this should be greater than zero, so at least um, one thing will show up if we have uh, one item. So, now I want you to think about this for a second. What were to happen right here if employees, this variable employees, is undefined? Will we still get an error, or will it still just show a blank screen because nothing is being rendered? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you need to pause the video, feel free to. Okay, so the answer to that is, well, you can see here that we probably won't get to this employees.map um, because you know of this condition. Undefined does not have a length greater than zero, so we won't get the type error here. But we will get the type error over here because an undefined variable does not have a property of dot length. So if I were to change this to undefined, <clears throat> and save that, you will see that undefined does not have property length. It'll say cannot read uh, property length of undefined. Now, what we have to do here is add a second check. And the order of the second check does matter. And that check is just going to make sure that these this employee's array is not undefined. So in order to do that, I can just go over here and type employees and end. And what that will do is when you have just a variable name as a condition itself, it will pretty much return true almost all the time unless the variable is false or undefined. And as we uh, talked about earlier, the and and will always return the um, what you will actually return is the last the thing on the right of the last and and so it'll check this and 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 then it'll be like okay this is true so let's check the next one this is true so let's check the next one oh this is the last um this is the last and and so we are going if this is true we are going to return it and because it's a react element it will always return true so now let's go ahead and make this an array let's add anthony and like george for example <clears throat> and you can see here it will render just fine. So this type of conditional rendering is super cool. You can even do things, you know, like um, for each condition, I can be like, you know, employee's length is greater than zero and and like or employee or, you know, some other logic and put it in a bracket. Um, the same way you could do things like that in regular if statements in, you know, all other programming languages as well. So that is essentially uh, very important to know um, working with this sort of conditional and and. It's worth noting that you can declare variables the same way as well. So for example, let's say for ex I wanted to store, you know, the first employee, right? First employee equals, if I were to just do employees zero, well, <clears throat> I would get this would be pretty much undefined if, you know, this was undefined. So. Uh, and it would give me an error, I believe, as well, because you can't read property zero of something that's undefined. So if I wanted to check whether or not employees um, is actually there or not before setting this variable, all I have to do is add the same logic. I could say employees 
and and employee zero. So you see here now we're not getting the error anymore because before it assigns this variable to anything, it will first check all the conditions on the left of the last and and. And then if this is true, it will then assign it to this. Now, if I were to just create an empty variable, it'll still an empty array, it'll still work because um, you can still get the zeroth element of an empty uh, array, it'll just be undefined. So right now this variable first employee is actually just undefined. Now let's move on to the second most important thing when it comes to conditional rendering, and that is the ternary operator. If you scroll down a bit, you will see here that this is essentially all it looks like. It is a condition, then a question mark, and then what will happen if the condition is true, and what will happen if the condition is false. So let's take a very basic example. Let's go ahead and cut this out, and let's say, you know, um, is user logged in, or let's just say is logged in, and let's set that equal to false. Now remember, you're probably going to get a variable like this from, for example, a prop or a state variable, or, you know, it'll be a response from the back end or something like that and let's get rid of all this so let's say you know h1 like welcome to the app and then let's end this h1 and then over here let's say i wanted to give a personal greeting message to somebody if they were logged in but if not i wanted to show a login button or something well what i can do is i'll start off by creating my squiggly brackets and i can type is logged in and then what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to write a question mark, and then I'm going to write a colon. And you can put circling braces in between both of these. So what this means is everything after the question mark is what you will return if the condition is true. Everything after the colon is what you will return if the condition is false. And I've put little circle braces here just to denote that I want to return JSX in both cases. So if the user is logged in, let's say I want to, um, you know, put some like, uh, you know, like, hell, hello, Anthony. But if the user is not logged in, I want to, let's make a div. Um, and in that div, I'm going to write like something like h2, like, um, let's say, for example, uh, oh, wrong, oh, sorry, um, h2, like, um, please log in to continue. And let's put like maybe a button or something that says like log in. And here you have it. So right now, because logged in is false, um, <clears throat> uh, we get the message, please log in to continue. Now let's go ahead and, you know, um, take this to another level. Let's combine everything that we learned so far and make this sort of a better application. So first of all, let's make is logged in a state variable. Um, so let's make it a uh, use state. We'll import it and we'll set this equal to false by default. And then we have to make this an array. So is logged in and set and let, let's just simplify by saying logged in and then set log in. Okay. Oops. Now this will be defaulted to false. And let's just create a button at the top. And what it will do when we click this button is if, um, so first of all, let's just uh, do the logic for the button first. So let's add an on click here. On click. And then when you click it, I just want to set logged in to whatever logged in isn't. So this button will be used to log in and log out. Now we want to display pretty much in that button logged it log in or log out depending on whether we're logged in. So we can go in here, create our squiggly tags, and if we're logged in, we want to display the message log out. And if we're already logged out, we want to display the message log in. And we go ahead and save that. So you can see here, um, logged in is set to false at the beginning. So you know this <laughs> login button will say login. And I guess we can get rid of this one um, just to avoid any confusion. And now if I were to click login, you will see here that it sets the state variable logged in to true. And it will automatically update and say, you know, hello, Anthony. And then we get a logout button. And you can just keep doing this over and over and over again. If you found value in this video, um, that's pretty much it. If you did find value, I can't tell you how much it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Just leaving a comment, saying anything, liking the video, I really appreciate it. I will read, and I do read every single comment, and I really love interacting with you guys. So I hope you're all staying safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.